been talking about delimitation at the center. Uh, what about de delimitation at the state? Uh, is a vote is a voter in Bangalore as as powerful as a voter from Shivamogga? I haven't heard of anybody talking about state level delimitation. Why are we not trying it out at a state level without you know before going to the central level? Can I Maybe it is a constitutional. It uh, happened. It happened. It happens. So it happened. Uh, it, it, at last time it happened. Yes. At, at 2002 state, it happened. Yes. At the state level, it does happen periodically because there isn't the 42nd or the 91st Amendment freezing the uh, state level uh, sort of you know uh, uh, you know I know where you vote in terms of your constituency because you happen to be my friend uh, and uh, where you vote and where my constituency is there's a line. Now we vote in different constituencies and that happens precisely because of state level delimitation for the MLA election and that happens periodically in every other state right uh, uh, the reason why this is not true for Parliament is because we have these uh, 42nd and 91st amendment where we froze it okay. just to add to that see delimitation with, within the state happened within the state the only the number was frozen you understand that suppose Karnataka had 28, it remained 28, but the boundaries of the constituencies changed. But the, the total number of the seats were kept unchanged, that's all. Yes, yeah. sir. Just to clarify the constitutional point, both the state assembly and MP and the Lok Sabha election, no, sorry, Lok Sabha delimitation have to happen at the same time because constitutionally both of them go hand in hand. It can't be that one state suddenly decides we will change all our boundaries because the two are linked. Your Lok Sabha uh, constituencies are, are split into certain uh, st uh, state assembly constituencies. So it isn't like half of a constituency in Bangalore will fall within one Lok Sabha constituency and the other half will fall in another. They are all divided into about seven to eight depending on the state. Uh, so just to clarify that one factual point. But my larger problem, I suppose, with the way in which the delimitation discussion happens is that, you know, we think South Indians are special. We all have horns behind our heads. We are the most hardworking, most tax-paying, most educated, bestest people in this country. I mean, we've got lucky because we got good leaders. Who at the end of the day suffers by not getting delimitation? It's that person in Bihar, it's the person in UP. It's the poorest people in this country. Now we are saying we want more of our seats, we want more of that money, so please fall further and further down the economic ladder. Please come and work for us for free. Well, we abuse you as Biharis and UPAs so are coming and ruining our cities. That's the underlying presumption in the delimitation debate that I don't think anybody is bringing up. Thank you. Even that is wrong. I will tell you one. See, the value of MMB or value of the representatives of uh, UP or Bihar or North India in real politics is much more now. You know why? The country is ruled by them. The representation of North in the Union Cabinet. You understand that. So when you want to pad up or add more value to the North India, you are oblivious about the fact that the country is virtually run by North Indian MPs. The representation of North in the Union Cabinet is much, much more. Why are we not discussing about that? Why are we only discussing about one single vertical? Nilagandan, that is the basic point I am telling you. Because think about the happening ministries. Think about the representation. Think about the allocation. Earlier we had a, what is that? Cooperative federalism. Then Prime Minister introduced uh, competitive federalism. Now it is crony federalism. You know what is crony federalism? The centre can even decide which investment should go to which state? You know what happened to that uh, uh, Vedanta project, Foscon Vedanta project, which was supposed to be in Maharashtra, with the involvement of the central government, it was taken out of Maharashtra and uh, took it to Gujarat. So so-called competitive federalism has turned to be crony federalism in this country. Even for private investment, the union government has got a say. This is my grouse about it. So when we are talking about, say, giving more uh, at par value of the member of parliaments, think about the clout of the North Indian states. Clout over the representation of North India in the union cabinet. Can I, my can submission would be, Nilagandan, if it is a true federalism, and if we can implement decentralization, this issue will be a non-issue. This issue will be a non-issue. 
let the people rule let the people's representative rule let the states have sufficient sufficient uh, i would say the power to i mean deal with the topics there let the local self bodies decide about the course of development there if we can bring in decentralization and true federalism the narrative the discussion the discourse on this would end uh, can i can, can i just yeah uh, sorry can i just answer that gentleman once which is that the question here is not one of you know we are better or they are better the question here is of system design right if you have afghanistan and united states in one country and you want a single government to rule over both sets of societies that is mathematically impossible that is our problem the my question is to uh, justice chalmeshwar in all this conversation i think one thing that uh, we uh, are not focusing on is the electoral system that we have uh, mr britas just mentioned it about fair representation we talked about minorities we didn't talk about women women are not represented in our legislatures other than the uk and the us two big countries in this world most of the liberal democracies or republics or you know democratic countries are now using proportional representation system why are we still stuck with first past the post and why is it that it is not a debate in this country across the parties or in the intellectual forums and in the supreme court what is your take on india switching to first uh, proportional representation system from the current first past the post system will you kindly explain what you mean by proportional representation you know, what is what is your concept of proportional can I, representation can i can i say, say the question Sorry. Yeah, so uh, in, in but countries it, it, it's i welcome it i mean partially you need to have such a system because i will tell you one thing if if one political party just because it's uh, minus by one odd it's completely i mean getting eradicated yeah mm -hmm. so i mean representation according to the votes which received by the parties that's what he meant about it so okay. sir uh, uh, just to give you context uh, there are many countries which uh, do this uh, one is germany for instance uh, where you know uh, it, it's not as first past instead of first past the post they have you know mps represented according to the proportion proportion of the vote right the problem however is that you might end up with what happened in sri lanka which is that uh, uh, you know <laughs> the, the the party that won uh, uh, and it, it, you know th those guys got thrown out because of whatever they had a crisis and then the party which lost formed government despite them not winning anything at all right so every every kind of system that we have has problems but anyway hello what, what i understand from the question is why are we not debating it that's right well there can be another occasion to debate it but today's uh, topic is not that no the electoral system and reforms of the electoral system are totally different topic well maybe well vasu and his colleagues may create one more occasion for that actually uh, i would uh, earnestly support a discourse on uh, election reforms this one nation one elections the main complaint about uh, i mean the present uh, format of election is that uh, so much of expenditure then uh, policy paralysis a third the bureaucrats are involved in uh, electioneering but uh, we are not uh, realizing uh, or rather seeing the elephant in the room and the biggest problem with uh, india is not about uh, expenditure uh, as uh, rightly said by shashi tharoor it would be hardly 10 paise for a citizen here now if you go by the uh, election expenditure because last time 2019 it was 9000 crore for the election expenditure and assuming that it is double the amount say 200 rupees per uh, citizen it would be hardly 10 paise and uh, i would say that democracy is expensive simple as that <laughs> otherwise bring in a monarchy or a despotism why we chose democracy because it's expensive naturally we want our aspirations our aspirations to be reflected and the second thing is that kushbu madam i i am completely at a loss did any of the policy decision of this government couldn't be implemented because elections because of elections tell me i have not seen single single item because i am a member of parliament i have been asking this bjp members tell me you created so much of mayhem and discord in this country by bringing in what is that citizen amendment act in 2019 sir you know that 2019 the parliament passed it the following day the president gave his accent you know even after 4 years 
CA has not been implemented. The rules have not been framed. Then what was the hurry for you to bring in that very controversial CA? Why did you make... John, I mean, the problem is it's, no. it's been implemented, not, not been implemented, or it was passed. Not even what is your problem? No, no, I am saying that. You want to create disquiet in the society, that's no, all. No, there's your, intention, your intention is to create polarization. Why? Nothing else. What is the polarization you're talking you about? You want to have Please Muslim, tell me Muslim, one, Hindu, one Muslim, Muslim, Muslim who Muslim. was sent out of India after CIA. Why was you brought, why did you bring in that? Why tell no, I'm asking a question. One Muslim who was sent out. Again, I'm saying this. Why did you bring that? This platform is not about Congress versus BJP. And I refuse to have an argument. You have been speaking as if you are in, in, in your uh, uh, Rajya Sabha and you are having an argument. I refuse to do that. This is a platform, this is about how we can find a better solution to a problem rather than blame game, rather than talking about who is superior, who is lesser. We are not here to discuss that and I refuse to have that kind of a conversation because a platform like this, a conclave like this, a summit like this is to have a better discussion and not have a tutu meme forum on a platform. So I refuse to do that. You're a good friend and I love to uh, have a conversation with you but we are not on this. And I think when we are here, we all need to understand that we need to be neutral. I, I represent my party, yes, but I refuse to indulge in any kind of conversation Conversation, which is going to lead away from what we were discussing today. Can I, uh, My opinion is uh, that Mr. Britas, no can neutrality can is a sin and a crime. When <laughs> to you, when to you, when injustice is happening in this. Country. No, there's absolutely no injustice uh, today. Me, today, what is injustice? Injustice, if you tell me, a very, very simple thing. I will, I will tell you. I will tell you. Three men against one woman. That is injustice. Oh. Please. Uh, I mean, not you. No, 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 no. One, my friend left. <laughs> Sir, one no, 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 friend no, no, no. left. One friend left. I Ms. Mean, Ms. Sundar, I, you're the only person I'm, who had I'm a temple. Com I'm completely okay. disarmed uh, now. Yes, Tara. Yeah, so uh, bringing it back to delimitation. Um, it is clear from the Women's Reservation Bill, there is a reference to the census and delimitation. My question is, and the history of the current government has been that there hasn't been a public discourse or a uh, necessarily a debate in parliament around any of the key laws. So I don't know what's going to happen for delimitation. But as the India Alliance is preparing, both from the perspective of the elections, whether you win or whether you lose, what is your stand on, are you going to delimit based on this 2011 census? Uh, if you win, and if you don't win, what are you going to do to make sure that there is a reasoned debate in Parliament before delimitation happens? What will you do for us? This is South first, we are, we're all South Indians here. See, first of all, we all say that such a crucial decision like delimitation has to happen after detailed discussion among the stakeholders. See, the government needs to make sure that there is a consensus. Already, South has many reasons to be aggrieved. For me, I will tell you, the, the theme of... Uh, Mr. Pratas, this will happen after 2020. No, no, I understand. So no, no, I understand. Uh, yeah. Even the, I would say, census. We had the G20 summit here. We are the only country we couldn't have the census here. Nothing prevented us from having the census. I don't know why it was dragged on. There is an ulterior motive. I charge. I charge. No, no, I tell you. Because they want to have the latest census figures so that the North Indian population can be little more. I, I suspect a foul play. I suspect a foul play. I'm entitled to suspect a foul play. Because that is how the South has been treated. That is how the South has been treated. Now, see... My whole point is this much. When you are having a one nation, now just think about the terms of references which was submitted before the Ram Govind committee. Even the local self-elections which are under the purview of the states have been clubbed with that. Don't you think it is usurping into the state's powers? The local self-bodies elections are under state governments. Government of India or Election Commission has no business whatsoever. Why was that linked to it? 
That means they don't even regard there is a unit called state in this country. That is my, I would say, my grouse against the decision of this government. Any decision which has got this much of drastic changes which can happen in the society has to be in the context of a consensus and detailed discussion. That happened in 2001 under Adal Bihari Vajpayee. I was witness to it. So I would urge upon Kushbu Madam, he, she should impress upon her uh, leaders that the southern discomfort is very evident and very explicit and considering the consternation of the southern states, there should be discussions among the stakeholders and the states. Without that, there should not be a decision which is unilateral. That's all. Can I, can I just add something here? Uh, I think what we should look at, uh, are, you know, look at the Kingdom of Denmark. It, you know, there's, a, there's a difference between Denmark, the nation, versus the Kingdom of Denmark, which includes Faroe Islands and Greenland, right? They have, Greenland and Faroe Islands have their own sort of elections and government and whatever. It's just that the Kingdom of Denmark controls their foreign policy. It's true for uh, the United Kingdom as well, right? Like, we should Im increasing, and those are much smaller societies and countries compared to ours. If those countries and societies are able to treat those independent entities as such and sort of give them that kind of independence in terms of governing themselves while they belong to a larger entity called the Kingdom of Denmark or the United Kingdom or whatever, why can't a country of 1.3 billion, 1.4 billion do that? That is the way forward, right? It is not one nation, it is one union with multiple nations. And, uh, and therefore, what is the concept of one nation, one election, when you're not even a nation? Uh, if I have two minutes, can I have two minutes? The topic which both of you are uh, hotly contesting, I'm, I'm not uh, taking stands. I'll just give you some data, that's all. See, this citizenship problem, what happens is these things become emotional issues. Immediately, people identify that this is meant for a particular purpose of hitting a particular uh, group of people. It's a partial truth. In 2004, there was a public interest litigation before the Supreme Court, initiated uh, by Mr. Sarwan Sonawal, who later became the Chief Minister of uh, Assam. There, the government of India, then the government of India was led by another party you know which what it was. They filed an affidavit according to the statistics available to the government of India, 10 million illegal immigrants were present in the country. It, this was in 2004. I don't know what is the present uh, this thing. Like, do you remember the judgment? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Sonawal. Sarwan Sonawal. Then, then Supreme Court gave some directions, initiate process to deport all these illegal immigrants, so on and so forth. Well, it's all fine in law and uh, emotions. But just let us be a little more rational. To identify 10 million, that is one crore, illegal immigrants in a population of some six crores of northeastern states, they are spread over northeastern countries, of course, partly Bengal also. To identify these one crore people, under the existing legal system, how many tribunals are required and how long they would take to complete this identification. It takes millennia. It takes millennia. No, but then everybody was fighting about the correctness of the law, not correct, this law is correct, not correct. And second thing and more important, the general, okay, maybe numbers, if we take the statistics, a particular segment of the society is more uh, in immigration, but well, both the ways, I know a particular case, just to give an example, an advocate in Gauhati, I was served there three years as Chief Justice. Half of the members of this advocate's family were served with notice under this act. The other half were not served. The fact remains, this advocate's father was a member of the Border Security Force for 30 years in the in the government of India. Still there is, I mean, these are all aberrations. I'm not saying this, this, in every case it happened like these are. Now point is, we forget about all these aberrations. Just is it a possible exercise? Or is there a better solution to deal with this problem? 
The fact remains, we as a nation, for the, for the first 40, 50 years, could not take necessary steps to prevent this illegal immigration. I know as former Chief Justice of Gohati, can I tell you a hilarious story? As Chief Justice of the Gohati High Court, whenever I visited other states, it was a high court for seven states those days. First time I went to Tripura, as Chief Justice, I was accommodated in the Raj Bhavan, Tripura Raj Bhavan. And it so happened there was an officer who was from my home state, Telugu man, serving the Raj Bhavan. So evening he came and he was telling me hilarious stories. From the Tripura Raj Bhavan, Bangladesh border is hardly four and a half kilometers. There is no wall, no fence, nothing. Maybe once in three, four kilometers, there is a security post. People can simply walk in and walk out. The, what he told me is, in Gauhat, sorry, Tripura, rickshaws were still a very popular conveyance. But you don't get a rickshaw after six o'clock. The reason, according to him, is most of these poor people, the rickshaw pullers, come from West Bang I mean, uh, Bangladesh. They come in the morning, earn their livelihood, purchase some vegetables or some milk or something, or maybe some liquor, then walk across, go back to Bangladesh. <laughs> See, such is the porosity of the border. And then instead of doing something about it, we keep on fighting about illegal immigrants, do oh, this party did, that party did. Well, I don't think, it, these are all, uh, they're all emotional arguments, not rational arguments. <laughs> Sorry, for Good afternoon. My question is why there is no internal reservation in uh, women reservation for SC, ST, and OBC? And uh, as a member of NCW, do you support it, ma'am? I didn't get you. As a member of NCW, do yes. you support internal reservation to SC, ST, and OBC in women reservation? And uh, another one question is will government bring it or not? And another one question. Uh, so why no, there no, wait, was, wait, wait. Why there was, these two questions are to me. Yes, me. Okay. Why there was no such reservation in uh, 2010 bill which was uh, introduced in parliament? Okay. So first two questions. Uh, see, we are already having 33% of reservation. Now again in 33% of reservation, we are asking for a reservation again. So reservation into reservation is what we are looking at. We already have a separate reservation bill when it comes to the SCST and everything, a tribe and everything else. So why are we looking into a reservation into reservation? The 33 percent is reservation is for women. This is what we women have been fighting for the last so many years, 50 long years. So now it has come into act. So let us take it forward. When you're looking into, if you're asking me as NCW member, I think we women have to stand together. 33 percent is just the starting. I would love to see a woman leading the nation from the forefront and having a lot of women in the parliament and taking the decision, policy making decisions taken by women. This as a woman is my idea of my next India, the next long term vision what I was talking about. NCW member, I would say that NCW member does not interfere with these kind of policies because it's a very um, constitute, it's not a constitutional organization, it's, it's a very constitutional uh, organization and not a politically based organization. So uh, we don't interfere with the policies of the government. And the reservation, internal reservation is inclusive. Uh, there, SCST, it is there. It's there. It's, it's already there. there. Okay. Okay, OBC is not there. Yeah. Okay. SCST is there. I, I, I mean, for a change, I wholeheartedly support Kushbu on this. Thank you. Finally. And I really wish that I have her as colleague in Daji Sabor Lok Sabha. There will be a lot of fireworks, <laughs> John. Yeah. You look beautiful in pink today. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I just had, uh, let me uh, start with, I think uh, uh, friend John has asked the question on polarization. So I just wanted to ask if delimitation and polarization are the only way forward we see from the ruling party in ruling over the nation going forward, or is there any other strategy? Just uh, a couple of more questions, uh, then maybe you can take it. And, uh, Maybe uh, another friend of mine asked, uh, so when we have, uh, when delimitation comes into force and we have most of our North Indian friends in majority over the South Indian friends, how do we ensure our states which send in more uh, taxes that we get our quota of funding from the center, right? And as a woman, let's assume I'm a Muslim, would BJP uh, give a party ticket to a woman Muslim uh, for contesting for 2024 or 
when you come to power, would there be a woman, uh, let's say a finance minister like Nirmala ji, who is uh, the finance minister winning without elections, uh, you know, take one of the major portfolios in the government. And uh, because Wait, we had, answer. We I, had might we had I, might I might forget the first we two had, questions. No, no, yeah, yeah, we had one comment from our deputy CM from the ruling party last time, Mr. Ishwarappa, who had told us, thumping his chest, that, you know, we will not give a single party to get to a Muslim. Forget about a Muslim woman. So how would BJP ensure OBCs also would be party to it? And like uh, Mr. Uh, John was telling, uh, yeah, yeah, we have an OBC prime minister, and I'm very proud that we have a woman president. Why was the woman president not allowed inside the parliament? Okay. Now, I think there are too many questions. Let me come one by one. Your first, I start with the last. Yes. We sure. never said the, prime, uh, the president was never allowed in the parliament. That's a strong allegation. She was not allowed into the parliament. We, we, we never saw her in the parliament, ma'am. Right, she, was, she, was the head of, she is the head of the uh, country. So it's not that she was not invited. She, she was not present, that's it. So it's an absolutely wrong allegation to say that she was avoided or she was not invited. Then your third question was, that was your fourth question. Your third question was? I was speaking about women representation, women representation. and Muslim representation. I belong to a Muslim community. I'm a I born Muslim. That. I'm I a born Muslim that, and I represent BJP here today. So I, I think the polarization is just the act of the opposition. I have been in the opposition. And let me tell you, the easiest job of the opposition is to sit down and mark down what can be opposed, even if it's good for the country. Just oppose. That is the basic idea and the qualification of being a good spokesperson of an opposition. I have been there, done that. So I think that's again the idea of the opposition of saying about polarization. Yes, we have had some leaders who have made very vague comments and which are not acceptable, which is not acceptable even by the Prime Minister himself. Because today when he's talking about women uh, empowerment, today he's talking about Nari Shakti, today he's talking about taking the country forward. Every policy of the government of India is for every member of this nation. It's not that this is for the Hindus, this is for the Muslims, this is for the Jains, this is for the Buddhists or Buddhism or this is for the Christians. No. Every policy, every scheme belongs to the people of this country which means that from a, a member of every different religion or caste, it belongs to them. Secondly, uh, what was your second question? No, this was her third question. Okay. The second question was how do our South states ensure that we get enough funding when we have majority of our North Indian friends. Exactly. Rule. And I said when we started the discussion, I said delimitation will not be based on population alone. There are other factors which needs to be considered. Depopulation, we are talking delimitation, we are talking about in 2026. We still have two and a half years to go. 2024, we have elections. And after that, first, we need to do the census. 2021, we were not able to do the census because of COVID. So we have to get the census done. 2026 is we are, what we are looking at the delim delimitation. And it's just that we have just started the discussion. So I think to jump and assume, assume that, okay, this is how it's going to be based only on population, I would say that we need to come out of the fear and have a dialogue. We need dialogue. We need the opposition. Absolute power corrupts you absolutely. And we as BJP we understand that and that is why we say that we need a healthy opposition and we say healthy opposition and this is what the Prime Minister also stressed in the Parliament and that is why he even urged the all the members in the uh, upper house and the lower house when we were talking about women uh, reservation bill that please come together and vote for it and I'm glad that everyone did it there was absolutely no opposition in Rajya Sabha and even in Lok Sabha, it was passed. So I'm very glad to that, that we as a position, when we understand that it comes for the country, for the betterment of country, we are standing together despite our differences on ideologies or political uh, stances. Uh, your Ms. first question. Uh, sorry. Uh, I haven't uh, finished answering no, your first okay. question. Uh, we're just running out of time. Yeah? So uh, can you quickly respond? And since, okay. because I've been since, asked to wrap up. since she referred to me, uh, I fully agree with uh, Kushbu that uh, uh, Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I fully agree with her. And the second point is that when she referred to President Kushwa, ma'am, please listen to me. See, what is the definition of parliament? 
parliament comprises of the president and both the houses. That is what is the definition of parliament. When the foundation for the new parliament was laid, the president was not there. When the new parliament was inaugurated, the president was not there. She is supposed to be inalienable component of the parliament. That is what she referred to. Can you imagine somebody who is supposed to be integral to the parliament is not seen when a new parliament house is inaugurated? When foundational stone of that uh, parliament new house was uh, laid? That is something which shocked us. We raised that issue. So we don't want a president, whether she is a woman or a tribal, to be kept away from one of the most important vital... I know we need to wind up, uh, John, yeah. but I would like to just answer this. I you know, everybody you is discussing about this, but the person who, who is the focal point, the president, nobody has asked her that how she feels. I think, you know, somebody should ask her, or she should come out with a statement whether she left, uh, feels left out or what is it. I think... Like I said, it's fine to discuss, it's fine, but then we all have our own ideas, thoughts, ideologies, our own assumptions, presumptions, and I think the person who is a focal point here, she should be speaking. Nobody speaks to her, nobody asks her, but as an opposition, we come to a decision that this is how it is, and it was absolutely wrong. I think we should leave it to the president, the, 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 Her Excellency, to give an answer to this before we get in our argument and continue with this. Thank you, Ms. Sundar. Uh, so I wish we uh, had more time to discuss what you know, I think is a solution, which would have been gamified direct democracy. Unfortunately, we don't have time for that. Well, here's a plug for my book. Go read the solution. Uh, but more importantly, I guess you know, we uh, have come to the end of this. And thank you very much, panelists, for what was an engaging discussion. Mm -hmm.